I will try. Suba Udesena? Udesena. Udesena. Although I realize it's almost noon already. I realize that not everybody will be able to hear me and understand me today. Um, but I hope that maybe other colleagues can share the message that I would like to share with you. Um, dear ladies and gentlemen, and of course, uh, distinguished uh, invitees, yesterday was a very important day in the Netherlands. A majority in our parliament voted for a quota for women in business. In the future, yes, 30% 30% of the boards of directors of stock market listed companies have to be female. And I do understand very well that um, board of directors are very far up for, for, for some of us, for me at least, let's say that. Um, but I hope that this will have an effect also on all the layers under the board of directors. So personally, I am happy with this outcome. The topic of discussion was understandable. There was a fierce discussion about this during a long period. Why is it fair to legally favor women above men? There are many answers to this question. But let me give just a quick answer, because it turned out to be necessary. We have tried many other measures in the past, all based on good intentions and voluntary principles. But as long as boards of directors exist of mostly men, and people in general tend to choose people that have the same characteristics as them, that I, I like them, so that means men choosing men, that's just something natural that we do, um, then um, this situation will not change, of course. So we need clear regulations. The measure is necessary not only because it seems fair to have women represented in boardrooms, not only because women have to make a living and work uh, on their professional development. This is not just necessary because we have all committed ourselves to the sustainable development goals, which include creating equal chances for all genders and providing decent work opportunities for everyone. It is also necessary because it's simply a business case. Women have an essential added value to the sustainable economic development of a country. Today, we have many examples on different levels. The Better Work Programme, for instance, which is an, an international labour organisation um, programme, working on decent work, especially in the garment sector, um, showed that if they hired women in, in management positions, the productivity went up. Because women felt more at ease having a female leader. Um, more recently, in May of this year, the same international labor organization published an article about women in leadership. Research has shown that women in leadership bring better business performance. A more diverse management, I say diverse, so both men and women, um, improves business outcomes and makes it easier to attract talent. More than 55% of the 13,000 companies who were questioned agreed on the fact that the more gender inclusivity resulted in improvements regarding creativity, innovation and openness within the company. And these findings are actually confirmed by an earlier study, a very well-known study by McKinsey, concluding that companies with also women in the executive boards lead to higher returns on investment, lower debt-to-equity ratios, and higher average net income growth. So now you know why I was eager to accept the invitation to speak at this conference.
I'm standing here as a professional, as an ambassador, but also as a woman. And I regard it as my task to promote female particip participation where possible. Because as I already mentioned, we need women to fully participate in society in order to reach the sustainable development goals, in order to reach sustainable development for Sri Lanka. Society cannot succeed when half of its population is held back. This goes for business and entrepreneurship, but also for public representation. Parliaments and governments need to reflect the diversity of their societies, not just in terms of gender. Again, society cannot succeed when half of its population is held back. I've learned that about 37% of the female workforce in Sri Lanka is working. In the Netherlands, that's 63%. So we also still have some work to do. But more important than knowing these numbers is understanding why these numbers are too low, actually, or not as high as they could and should be. Women still face other challenges than men. And as a mother of two boys, I personally would have been lost without the support of institutional arrangements like, for instance, childcare. Even with a very supportive man, traditional role models still exist globally. Besides this, specifically with regard to entrepreneurship, access to finance remains a challenge for many women. Globally, men and women encounter limited access to finance, but the barriers for women are higher. The barrier, barriers differ from mobility, level of education, to discriminating laws, and the most important one, lack of collateral. Also in Sri Lanka, women's ownership of formal, small, and medium-sized enterprises is low. And I'm therefore so happy to see all these women here in the room. But there are also still many women in Sri Lanka who struggle to transform their informal micro scale business uh, into formal, small, and medium large enterprises. But denying women access to finance me means that the market is actually losing out on a huge opportunity. Internationally, it's known that banks that serve women do well for themselves. Women outpace men in overall growth in volume of credit and volume of deposits. Women are strong savers with lower loan to deposit ratios than men. And women are prudent borrowers with lower non performing loans than men. Of course, I do not want to put men down. <laughs> you are a huge force and potential to the development of this country and globally. But for years we have built up evidence that women do at least just as good a job as men. Women in Sri Lanka are educating themselves full speed. More women than men currently graduate from almost all disciplines. Um, and more, yeah, now actually you would say that it's time to strengthen capacities of banks, government agencies, and also other stakeholders in an integrated approach. They have to transform their behaviors and procedures in order to include, fully include women. And if they do, women will take their responsibilities and grab a chance. And these responsibilities go beyond earning their own livings and making profits. I know that social entrepreneurship is an important component of this conference. And I would like to take the opportunity to stress its importance. I already mentioned the sustainable development goals. And to be honest, uh, I make a point of mentioning them in all my speeches. They are so important for our development. 
Um, and we have to work together to make sure that we tackle the issues of poverty, inequality, climate change, water management, education. Sri Lanka is very vulnerable to climate change and also still has some other challenges, like the Netherlands. And I ask you as entrepreneurs, male and female, uh, to play a role and take your responsibility in this endeavor. As professionals, you can help reaching these goals by being aware how your company can mitigate negative environmental effects or even make a positive contribution. And how your company takes care of its employees and contributes to their well-being. Because that is so important and the basis of your society. And maybe, even if you're a bigger company, in the short time that will take extra time, energy and money, but in the long run, this will pay off. A happy workforce is more productive, creative and dedicated. Saving energy and water will cut, cost, cut costs. Moreover, and this is where the real long-term vision comes in, you will be a reliable partner to Western companies and brands who would like to buy your products. They, the European companies, are pressured by their governments to make sure that their value chain is sustainable so that the products that they buy and that they source from other countries are made in the right manner, under the right circumstances, without uh, polluting the environment too much and taking good care of their employees. And if you, if Sri Lankan companies, entrepreneurs and organizations show that you are producing, manufacturing and doing business up to these standards, then you become the preferred, preferred sustainable choice for Dutch and other Western trading partners and investors. So I'm asking you a lot. I'm asking you to work, make a living, take care of your kids, um, but also to be a role model for your colleagues, for other women, um, but also for Sri Lankan society. And last but not least, <coughs> Uh, for the world to see that Sri Lanka is the professional, diverse, sustainable choice. It is a lot, but I see the potential here in the room. Looking at a room full of people who in all kinds of different ways and in all kinds of different layers and levels are trying to make a change gives me pleasure and trust. I wish you a very inspiring conference, or what um, is still left of it, and I hope it gives you ideas, new ideas, and new energy, new friends, a new network to work on the challenges ahead. Good luck.